gathering, I have a great way of avoiding that awkward small talk with random strangers. I simply ask the person I'm talking to what they do, and they tell me. And then they kind of have to ask me back, and I say, me? I teach college math. Boom, conversation over. Because most people are not very interested in math. In fact, most people don't even like math. To be honest, I didn't always like math either. I remember in first grade, I failed my first subtraction test. I got a zero, zero. I was humiliated. I was devastated. I cried in class. But fortunately, I had wonderful teachers in school and at home and in nature that helped me see math and the world and my place in it in a whole new way. I'm a wonderer. I am curious about everything. I'm awed by nature, by the planets, by the stars, by animals, by people, by literally everything, like rainbows. When I was a little girl, I wondered about how rainbows could appear in the sky when there was nothing there but water and light. Or why, if we were driving down the highway toward a rainbow, the rainbow seemed to move away from us. Now, I wonder about how rainbows show up in a clear blue sky when there isn't a storm anywhere in the area. Or honeybees. Now, apparently, bees are not supposed to be able to fly, but nobody told the bees. Not only that, for centuries, honeybees all over the world have built their combs in the shape of a hexagon. Now, a hexagon is one of only three regular polygons, which can fill an entire space with no gaps and no overlaps. Not only that, hexagons make a really strong structure using a minimum amount of material, the wax, and providing a maximum amount of storage space for the honey. How the heck did the bees figure that out? I have no idea, but I'm curious. Or sunsets. Why does the sun seem to change color so beautifully every night? I know there's good math in, in atmospheric science to help explain that, but what I don't understand is why the sunset tonight will be different from every other sunset I have ever seen. These are very curious patterns. And it makes me wonder how many other patterns I'm not noticing. I mean, how many patterns do you not notice? I'm going to try to help you notice one that's been in front of you since you were a child. Now, to do that, I need you to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And I mean it. I mean, sing it like you mean it. All right? Are you ready? Here we go. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P, Q-R-S-T-U-V, W-X, Y, and Z. Oh, now I know my ABCs. Next time, sing along with me. How many of you did not notice until this very moment that those two songs have the same melody? And you've been singing them since you were knee-high to a grasshopper. Maybe you just didn't notice. Noticing patterns is kind of the foundation of mathematics. Now, there's a lot of really cool patterns in math, like this one. This is one of my favorites. If you square a number, say 3 squared, 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. But it's also the sum of the first three odd numbers. 1 plus 3 plus 5 makes 9. Or, or 5. 5 squared is 5 times 5, or 25. Or the sum of the first five odd numbers. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. And in fact, this pattern keeps working no matter how big a number you're squaring. So 527 squared is 527 times 527, or the sum of the first 527 odd numbers. Who wants to do all that adding? Not me, so thank goodness for multiplying. Isn't that a cool pattern? I think it's really odd. <laughs> okay, I know, that was bad, that was bad. Okay, here's another, 
<laughs> Here's another favorite pattern of mine. You've, you've probably heard of the irrational number pi. And pi is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. And it's equal to approximately 3.14. Well, if you reverse those digits, you have 4, 1, 3. And that kind of spells pi. And, and we all know pi are circles. Whoa. <laughs> okay, it's okay to be silly with math. It's okay to have fun with math. Um, let's look at some patterns in nature, okay? So here's a zero in nature. There's a zero. And there's a one. Help me out. Two, three, four, and five. Five seeds make a star in the middle of the apple you ate for lunch today. Not only that, that five star pattern reminds me of the flowers in my garden. It reminds me of, of sand dollars on the beach or starfish or even, yes, a praying mantis. What's it with those fives? I mean, five even reminds me of me in the morning when I stretch. <sighs> two arms, two legs, and a head. What's with the fives? Cool pattern. Well, see if you can notice a five in a little while. Let's, let's look at some other patterns. You probably know that walnuts are good for you, and there are nutrients in walnuts that are especially good for your brain, which is really cool because walnuts look a lot like brain coral or your brain. Whoa. Or trees. Maybe you've heard that trees are the lungs of the earth. They breathe in carbon dioxide, and they breathe out oxygen in the same way that our lungs breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. But have you ever noticed that the branches of a tree look a whole lot like the bronchial branches in your lungs? And not only that, they both look a lot like a sea fan which filters the water in much the same way. That's a cool pattern. Which brings us to the idea of symmetry. Now, symmetry in math is two things that are the same, like the sides of an equation, or like a graph whose right and left side match, or a three-dimensional solid, and if you cut it like a cake, or better still, a pie, the two sides match. Now, to a mathematician, these symmetries are beautiful. To me, I see the beauty of math symmetry everywhere. In the sky, reflecting in the water, as above, so below. I see symmetry in the garden or in crystals from the earth. Now, this one is called magnetite, and it is the most magnetic of all naturally occurring minerals, which is clearly why I am so attracted to it. <laughs> Okay, sorry, sorry. But do you notice the symmetry and the pattern? It's beautiful. And there are good mathematical reasons you can discover in chemistry for why that is so. You can also see symmetry in the insects in your garden or in the animals that share your homes. You can see symmetry clear down to a cellular level. Now, I don't have a good picture of a cell, so I'm going to use this nebula. This is called the eight burst nebula, and it's formed by gases escaping from a dying star at the center in much the same way that cellular contents pull away from the center of the cell. When a cell's about to divide, the duplicated DNA line up along the middle and they are pulled toward the opposite poles of the cell, and they look a lot like this. This is called the bug nebula. And the contents continue to fall farther and farther and farther apart until two new daughter cells are formed, and they look like this. Yes, another nebula. So these symmetric patterns that are happening in your body and my body every moment of every day are also found out in the universe. That's amazing, isn't it? And what's even more amazing, at least to me, is that long before human beings knew about cellular division, long before we could see nebula, we recognized these patterns. This is the chalice well cover 
in Salisbury, England, and it was fashioned by medieval craftsmen hundreds of years ago, and yet it holds the same symmetric pattern, which we call the Vesica Pisces. That's amazing. A particular kind of symmetry in math is called a ratio and harmony. Now, you probably remember ratios as the dreaded fraction, or worse yet, rational expressions. Well, I love these, but when I think of ratio, I also think of, of the notes in a song, like this. Do, re, mi, do, mi, do. That's a third. Or do, re, mi, fa, so, do, so, is a fifth. When I think of harmony in math, I think of an oscillating cosine wave or a sine wave, which looks a lot like a light wave or a sound wave. So when I think of harmony, I also think of light and sound together, like this. Beautiful math. Now, ratios can also be distances near and far or changing sizes. Without ratios, we couldn't build the bridges that span the waterways and keep our cars out of the water. Ratios could be two things that are the same or many things that have the same proportion but different sizes. If it weren't for ratios, the pyramids would not be one of the seven wonders of the world. Now, I just said proportion. All a proportion is is two ratios that are equal. And isn't that beautiful? How can you not love proportions? Well, if beauty is in the eye of the beholder, then I think this peacock has so many eyes that the world must be a very beautiful place to him. To my eyes, the beauty of math is everywhere, like the great prismatic spring in Yellowstone National Park, or the nebula, the Helix Nebula, somewhere out there, maybe looking down at us right now and seeing how beautiful we are. A rose by any other name might be a pair of spiral galaxies. How lovely. To paraphrase the bard Shakespeare, what's in a name? That which we call the Cat's Eye Nebula by any other name would smell as sweet. Look at the spiral pattern in the center of that rose. You see it in other plants in the garden. Up oh, there's that five. Did you notice it? The five-part set symmetry in the middle. You see that same spiral in simple animals around you. In fact, you have seen that spiral thousands of times. Have you noticed it? Every time you brush your teeth or take a shower or take a bath, that spiral is in the water going down the drain which brings us to one of the very many mysteries that we can explore using math. It was a dark and stormy night, and nothing was there. And from the nothing came the one thing. Now that nothing and that one thing, they got together, and you know what they made? Another one thing, just like the first. Now you know what happens when one and one get together, right? They make... I didn't hear you. That's right. And a one and a two together, they make a three. Yes. And then the two and the three, oh my goodness, they made a five. And then the three and the five, what did they make? An eight. Oh my goodness. And the five and the eight together made a 13. And the, oh, wait, 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 we better stop. We just ran out of room. But that's okay. Let's go back to the first square. And we're going to draw a quarter circle from corner to corner like that. And let's do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again, until there we see that spiral. So you remember when you were a little kid, 
and you went to the beach, and your mom or your grandma said that if you held a seashell up to your ear and you listened very quietly, that you might hear the sound of the waves of the ocean, and you did, and you got so excited that you ran around and around and around like a little tornado until your mom or your grandma said, settle down, settle down, honey, but you couldn't help it because your whole planet is filled with examples of that same spiral pattern. Not only that, the entire universe is filled with examples of that spiral pattern. These are the antenna galaxies, colliding galaxies. And not only that, you and me, long before we were born, when we were little tiny embryos, we looked like that. And that is beautiful. Leonardo da Vinci, he knew about that spiral. And from that spiral, he and we can discover other mysteries in math. So now, maybe we have a clue as to what that enigmatic smile was all about and why this beautiful painting still enchants us. The harmony, the ratios, the proportions are mathematically perfect. So let's look at that pattern again. This is called the Fibonacci sequence. Another mystery you find in this sequence happens when you take one number in the sequence and divide it by the number that comes before. The answers get closer and closer and closer and closer to another irrational number, phi, the golden mean. And we find the golden mean not only in art and nature, but also architecture and our own anatomy. It is literally as close as the fingers on your hands. Look, one, one, two, three, five. From head to toe, your entire body is filled with this pattern, with this ratio, all the way down into your DNA. The length of one complete rotation of the double helix spiral along the inner curve, the minor arc, is about 21 angstroms. The length of that same complete rotation along the outer curve, the major arc, is about 34 angstroms. The ratio in your DNA is the golden mean. These mysteries are everywhere. They are just hidden in plain sight, waiting for you to discover them. I see such beauty all around me in every experience, in every day, in every moment, in every one of you. And I hope now that you are empowered to see with new eyes, that you are inspired by patterns and symmetry, by ratio and harmony, and that you find in math the means to reveal and understand that which connects you to everything that ever was or will be. And in that understanding, you come to realize that you, you in particular, are an essential part of this exquisite tapestry of beauty and mystery. Thank you. Thank you.